Welcome back to Scoundrels, Inc., another Star Wars podcast. Uh, this week, it is Brandon and myself again, you lucky, lucky people out there. Kevin will be back. Kevin will be back uh, next week. He's, he's just, out. He's, just, he's scouting wing locations for us. Sque- <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> scouting wing locations. You know, when I was down there a few weeks ago, uh, I had my own little personal wing tour, if you will. I had about four or five different wings from different establishments. It was... It was a it, it was a lot. <laughs> I'll tell you, <laughs> ten wings of every time I sat down. It was sometimes twelve. Uh, it was it was uh, it was a battle. It was a journey. I'm jealous. All right. So, <laughs> look, we know what's what's going on in the world, uh, particularly in the Hollywood sphere, uh, Hollywood land, uh, SAG AFTRA has has struck along with the Writers Guild that's been on strike for like 70 plus days now. And SAG struck and there was a lot of talk, I'm sure everyone has seen it all over the internet and Twitter about what can people um, cover, talk about without breaking strike rules and all of that and showing solidarity because we here uh, at Scoundrels Inc., absolutely show solidarity with all the strikers, writers and actors and, and everybody else aligned with them, whether they're in the guild or not. Um, you know, we definitely show solidarity and I know we kind of want to talk about it a little bit. I know Brandon, you, you have some thoughts on, on the matter. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure, you know, we, we mentioned it and we like showed our support um, for SAG-AFTRA and the WGA and um, the strike and, uh, yeah, all that stuff's really important, and it's, I mean, the whole reason we have a silly little podcast like this is because of the talent behind these shows, uh, so we wouldn't even be here. We wouldn't have a reason to keep our friendship alive without them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a funny way to put it, but, you know, it is what it is. I would never see Frank if it weren't for this show, so... <laughs> Shout out to the writers no, I mean, and the actors out there. No. Yeah. Um, it's kind of true, but kind of funny. No, uh, but yeah, it, it's um, it's absolutely crazy. Like, like that these studio executives like are saying the things that they're saying in interviews and the media, and the strike is still you know ongoing. But um, yeah, like I said, I just wanted to mention it up top. Uh, show our, our support and we will have um, links in the description down below how you guys can um, show your support get more educated um, on the subject and there's like places like the donate to help out you know the actors and writers who are out of work um, during this difficult time so um, if you have a little bit to give feel free um, information will be uh, down there and um, yeah like I said um if you want to get educated, I know, as Frank mentioned, all of the, the rules for you know, what we can or can't do. Um, not that like there are rules per se that we like have to follow. But since we do, of course, uh, support the strike, we want to make sure that uh, we handle everything as uh, delicately and professionally uh, as possible. Um, yeah. Anything else, Frank? Yeah, I honestly, uh, I did want to talk about a little bit about the the strike itself and what and what the actors and the writers and uh, are fighting for because uh, I don't know if you've watched Fran Drescher's um, initial speech when they first went on strike and she's given mm-hmm. she's given subsequent interviews um, since after as well as I think Sean Gunn's video from the, from the Hollywood Reporter pr- kind of went viral if you will and got a lot of notice and um, reporting on um, and and as someone myself, I'm not part of that union, but I am part of a union, a labor union. You know, I work for United Airlines, and we're in the um, IM 141, and uh, that's in the airline industry. And you know, we've recently, well, I work on the ramp. So you have the ramp workers, you have pilots and flight attendants, and a lot of stuff got kind of 
iffy with with the pandemic as a lot of things did and you know we were on a five-year contract the rampers which i'm part of uh we were on a five-year contract and that that expired in 2020 so right in you know as the pandemic was happening all that and so both sides the union and the company kind of pushed it off until things got better and the world was a little bit more back to normal and talks resumed to certain contracts and it was just really really rough um between the union and the company and this is no different everything i'm hearing about from sag and, and the writers guild um is stuff that you know i was hearing from our union leaders back over um at united and it was just you know not negotiating in good faith there's you know um fran drescher talks about the 12-day extension you know they gave and says that you know the studios basically did nothing to try and come to a deal try to compromise instead they pretty much use it to promote their movies for an extra 12 days which you know which, which is just a really shady thing to do um all that said you know there's a lot of things that the the guilds are fighting for particularly when it comes to ai and basically how that translates to other unions because fran does talk about how this this isn't just isolated to sag and the wga this is across all types of labor across the country across the world and you know i've very much um her speech very much resonated with me in terms of how this is um you're fighting for equal or um what's the word i guess more you know equitable distribution of the wealth that we're helping all these companies make i mean believe it or not you know the airline industry was making money hand over fist during the pandemic and a lot of people were laid off during in the pandemic at the airline specifically i was fortunate enough to keep my job during the airline or during the pandemic and sometimes there wasn't a really lot of work at first but then everything ramped up again as the world got kind of back to normal and these companies were just pushing everybody to the limit um, and doing it in various ways whether they're cutting your hours about hiring more people and moving people all over the place um, working conditions weren't exactly the best and every whether you're an actor or you're an electrician or a teacher or someone who works on the ramp at the airport we have a lot of the same struggles a lot of the same fights going on and that's why you hear uh, the term hot labor summer floating around because you see, I'm seeing a bunch of um, hotel workers on strike every time I go to work um, rental company you, you know those workers are on strike um ups is going on strike probably i think you know and then you have sag and the wga and um some of the airlines you know or flight attendants and pilots you know they're ready to strike so a, a lot of upheaval in terms of the labor force is happening in this country and it's because of comments like bob Iger, <laughs> you know when he talks about things that the labor the, the unions want is unrealistic when he's making 27 million dollars um and we're the you know the labor force is being unrealistic it's really just um it's shocking to hear and it's and it's sad to hear and a lot of it i think comes down to this being you know everyone wants your company to be uh financially and fiscally responsible you know i think everyone wants to be uh, people want to be a part of a company that can do that because that brings longevity to the company and hopefully job security which you still have to fight for even in the uni i mean like that's one of the negotiating you know um aspects that all the unions go through um for us it's about being outsourced to other companies that pay their workers more but have less protections and then when you look at sag they want to scan you know background actors and then use ai to insert them in any project in perpetuity with only paying them a day rate it's, it's pretty insane like they're they're the same but different you know um but what, what i was going to finish saying is that while we all want companies should be fiscally and financially responsible i think what we're seeing now is this aspect of companies not being morally responsible and i think that's the biggest and um that's the most disheartening thing i think out of all of this is not being morally conscious of how your fellow workers how the workers below you if they're the ceo how are they being taken care of um because right now they're not we're not you know, and um, I, I'm, I'm sure if you talk to, and I've seen other comments on Facebook, on Twitter, and where have you, 
about, you know, other people commenting, I'm not in SAG or WGA, but I'm in this other union. I can totally relate, but this hits home for a lot of people in the labor force. And hopefully, you know, with SAG and WGA shining a brighter light on how workers are treated um, across the board, you know, there can be major change in this country for for those, you know, who are making very, very small amount of money compared to the CEOs who are making 400 times what they make. Um, it's really just how can that be a thing? You know, it's how much money could the top people possibly have, possibly need without distributing it um, in, a, in a fair way, you know, and, and it, that's basically, you know, what unions are fighting for in general is a fair share. They just want to have a fair share of everything that they're helping the companies produce. I mean, all these companies, especially throughout the pandemic, coming out of the pandemic, were making record amounts of money. And yet, when unions go to the negotiating table, they don't want to give a raise to those people who helped make them all this money. It's just mind boggling. And it's, and, and people are getting fed up. And Every time I see, every time I drive to work and I see a union or I see a strike going on, and you know, I honk my horn because I might not be in that union, but I know they're fighting for the same things that I'm going to be fighting for, along with everybody else in, in every other union. So, um, if you're in a union, I, hope, I, I would like to think you can kind of relate to this because people will point towards, oh, these are actors and they live the glamorous life. It's Hollywood, blah blah blah. Um, that's such a, a misinformed viewpoint because if you watch the news, if you watch these people speak. You know whether it's you know Sean Gunn or Fran Fran Drescher talking about you know yeah the one percent of this guild you know is wealthy but like 99, 95 percent of everybody else is is scraping is just getting by and that shouldn't be the case um, you know these these multimedia companies have made decisions that they're trying to dig themselves out of this hole and they're taking it out on their on their workforce by not paying them properly because. You know, the streaming didn't work out the way they thought it was going to work out, and now they're trying to figure out how to rectify that situation while, while still giving themselves a bonus in the process, you know. Uh, it's pretty absurd and just morally bankrupt. Um, and that's, again, that's just the, the thing I, I take away from all of these um, quote-unquote negotiations where people are being stonewalled and not negotiating in good faith because it just it's morally bankrupt, and it's, it's all in the name of greed um, and, and it's sad, it's sad to see because, you know, I, I don't know what else it's going to take. I feel like at this point, um, this could be the tipping point that we need with all these unions just being stonewalled in negotiations or not given an inch or maybe it, they're given incremental changes, but it's just not enough, especially with the state of our world in this country. So kind of being on a long rant, but like, <laughs> <laughs> but like this stuff is really, you know, important to me and um, um, more so probably because I am in a union, but even if I wasn't in a union, it's about wanting the best for our neighbors, you know, our, you know, our, our fellow citizens, if you will. And um, I, I feel like, you know, people are so, if it doesn't affect me, why am I even to mess with it? And it's, you know, one day, just because today it doesn't affect you, you know, Maybe it maybe it will never affect you, but maybe it affects someone you know, you know, and, and now they miss the rent or they can't put food on the table. It's you know, it's going to affect everybody one way or another in some form or fashion. Maybe it's small, maybe it's big. But I think, you know, with with all this happening, you know, I hope people can open up an eye and see what's really going on, you know. I mean these CEOs, they are not your friends. They are they are not in your cor corner. Uh, George Carlin, I think, said it best. He's like, it's a big-ass club, and you ain't in it. And that's, and that's the truth. Sure. You watch the news today. I mean, like, it is the, it's, it's the truth. You It's it's incredible. And I think that stand-up special was from, like, the 90s, early 90s, mid-90s or something like that, and we're almost 30 years later, right? So it, it's it's insane how 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 these companies – behave and act towards the, the 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 workforce that's actually making them all this money you know and um there's a lot more to be said about the state of hollywood and i have other thoughts on that but we're not going to get into that right now um we do want to uh, proceed as a star wars pro podcast and um mm -hmm. you know 
Brandon, you were kind of talking about it earlier about kind of the rules and what to do and what not to do or just to show solidarity. And believe me, I've been trying to read everything, watch all these videos, and other people are doing, um, you know, the work of trying to figure out what they can report on, what they can cover. Can they do, you know, reactions? Can they do reviews? And actually I saw, I'll put the, again, links will be in the description if, uh, if you haven't seen these videos at least. Um, Greg Alba from the Real, Real Rejects, he did a great video breaking it down for people like in the YouTube space basically and to, who do, you know, uh, reactions to movies or TV shows and, and reviews and breakdowns and kind of like the stuff we do here on, on this channel. And uh, basically said that like, yeah, you're good to go. Um, I know other channels are not doing it because, you know, they just, maybe they're right there uh, about being in SAG and they don't want to muddy the waters, or maybe they're actually in SAG and so they really can't <laughs> do it. <laughs> um, um, but just know that um, we are definitely um, in solidarity with these unions and I hope they get what they deserve um, as I do, as I hope with every other union out there, uh, they should get what they deserve, a fair share. Um, and that's all and that's all we're asking you know yeah and if i may add frank i think you did a really great job kind of explaining all of that and saved me from talking in circles a bit up front <laughs> <laughs> but um you're you're 100 percent right you know this isn't like just a hollywood problem this is like a workforce problem like in, not just in the united states primarily probably but <laughs> you know in, in the whole world right now the state of everything and corporate greed is just an awful thing and you know, like you said, like, like these people aren't like rich and famous, like 1% of them, you know, might be really well off and the people are Robert Downey Jr.'s of the world and right. things like that. But, and there's just like so much like misinformation out there and it's like, oh, well now it's time to get a real job and, you know, you know, you know, it's not easy to make it out in Hollywood. And it's just like, well, yeah, but these are the people that made it. These are the working actors. These are the working screenwriters. Um, these are the people that made it and they can't pay rent. They can't put food on the table. They go up to accept a Oscar for best screenplay and they can, can't even afford a suit to wear to the event. You know, it's just absolutely insane. Um, you know, I say it almost hyperbolically, but this is like, these are like true stories that are out there right now that <laughs> yeah. you can go and find. Um, this is like the real thing. So um, it, it's crazy. And, um, you know, speaking from a union, Frank, you know, you know, it was really great to get your point of view. Um, I'm fortunate enough where I work for like a smaller company where I can just like go into the CEO's office at any time and just talk to him. But like mm -hmm. these big corporations, they don't care, like you said. And um, it's just an awful thing. So um, I want to add to that and then also kind of like just to transition into some of our Star Wars talk. You know, I also heard a lot of people mention like don't you know unsubscribe from your um streaming services because um there's still a lot of executives in hollywood that are using that like as an excuse for saying like oh we still don't know about the future of these streaming services and if they're viable platforms and therefore we don't have to pay our writers and our actors adequately um <laughs> for the stuff that we play on here and we pull shows from them because we don't want to pay people residuals and things like that and so um so thankfully i think we've like kind of like found an excuse to, to talk about something that's on disney plus today and um and it's animated which is also really important because uh animation is like at threat of ai right now and not just the writers telling the stories, but the actual visual medium itself, the artistry of it. This is the stuff that people uh, are fighting for. So I'm excited to get into some some Clone Wars talk today. Yeah, absolutely. And we're continuing, I guess, uh, part two of our uh, Ahsoka Essential episodes <laughs> as we gear up for... Uh, Ahsoka premiering on, on the Disney Plus app, August 23rd. <laughs> um, and uh, these two episodes that we are covering are from um, Season 5, Episode 19 and 20, I believe. Uh, yeah, Season 5, Episode 19 and 20, To Catch a Jedi and The Wrong Jedi. This basically is the two concluding episodes of this arc of Ahsoka being expelled f uh, from the Jedi Order. 
um, and then being asked to come back, but then saying, no thanks, uh, deuces. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is one of the most, I think, important arcs and stories within Star Wars, um, regardless if it has Ahsoka in it, because it really... Um, I don't know if you if you caught this, Brandon, but it's like it's such a different take on the Jedi Council and how politically they work within themselves and with you know the the Republic as a government itself. Um, I don't know if you've watched the other two episodes or have seen the whole arc, but um, for like Ahsoka fans, basically, um, you know, there's there's you know she basically gets framed right for. Um, setting off uh, an explosion in the Jedi Council or the Jedi Temple and killing people um, and then also killing uh, the wife of someone else. I forget I forget the specifics because I didn't go back and watch those other two episodes. <laughs> but I know that she gets framed for uh, murder, basically, and a bombing in the Jedi Temple. And um, she's being hunted down, basically. It's like a precursor to like Order 66 for her, like which is kind of crazy because you have clones after her, other Jedi after her, and things of that nature. Um, and no one's believing her, except for Anakin, which he kind of takes a little bit to come around to, but then is like, yeah, also Mace Windu, dude, just, he's just like, <laughs> it's the worst. <laughs> like, I get it. Like, dang, man. Like, it, it was, um, I think it was the, in the, the wrong Jedi episode, I think it was, mm -hmm. when they're talking about um, Anakin should go and, like, bring her back. After down in Waze Window, was like, I don't think he should go. And Obi Wan's like, he knows her best. And he's like, um, no, I don't think so. And then basically Yoda overrides and is like, Anakin, go go get her. <laughs> just like, <laughs> Mace is just like, always has uh, you know, one eye on Anakin. He doesn't really like what's up with this dude. And even in mm -hmm. this situation, he says that, you know, he's too close or too it's too personal. He's too emotional in uh, you know, to be a, um on this mission. Um, but Brandon, I guess I'll go to you for all your kind of overall thoughts mm -hmm. on on this particular take of the Jedi Order, where they expel a member of of the Order. Yeah, so this is like my I was familiar with the arc, but this is my first time actually sitting down and watching it. And yeah, no, like first of all, like Ahsoka is a hundred percent right for not coming back. She's like, no, like these people didn't trust me when they should have. They were supposed to be like my family and the people that looked out for me and the first chance they had to like abandon me, they did. <laughs> so like, why would I want to like rejoin an institution like that? And um, it kind of makes like some of the stuff that like Barris says, like when she confesses to be like a hundred percent accurate <laughs> about the it's Jedi. <laughs> uh, yeah. The Jedi order and the Republic. Um, it's amazing how many people tell them this same thing, like Count Dooku, Barris. <laughs> I'm sure somebody else does. And they're like, nah. <laughs> right. They're like, let's not listen to them. They have a red lightsaber. They maybe, don't know what they're talking about. Maybe if Mace paid more attention to what attention to what was going on mm -hmm. within the Jedi Order instead of you know having such an eagle eye on Anakin, he probably could have helped in this situation without the downfall of the Jedi. But, apparently, <laughs> but you know, he's... You know, everyone has a role to play, I guess. Yeah, and it's interesting seeing Tarkin, like, dude, yeah. work with, like, the Jedi Council. And, like, you could just, like, even though it's animated, you could just, like, see the disgust in his face every time he, like, has to talk to a Jedi. You're like, yeah, no wonder that guy was on board with, like, Order 66. Oh, yeah. The Empire and all that. He's just, like, he never liked the Jedi from the jump, it looks like. Um, but... Yeah, um, I did want to point out that last week we kind of like talked about how Ahsoka is like all of the good qualities of Anakin and none of the bad. Like she's everything that we love about Anakin. Um, and, and, and we kind of see that shine through again. We're like at the end of the, the, the finale, um, her and Anakin are talking and Anakin's like, like you have no idea like how badly like I've thought about leaving the Jedi yeah. order. Oh, and and, so, and so, and it's like, uh, once again, we see like Ahsoka, like taking the great qualities of Anakin and actually like seeing them like shine through where like, unlike Anakin, she did have the courage to leave. And if Anakin had the courage to leave, he probably wouldn't have fallen to the dark side. Um, so that wasn't his destiny, was it? No. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, 
if maybe there wasn't a destiny, then maybe. Well, there's, that would be a good what if. If Anakin left with Ahsoka, what would have happened there? Who knows? Yeah, well, you know, Anakin eventually did leave the Jedi Order, Brand. I don't know if you know this. Yeah, but like, <laughs> as a Sith. Yeah. <laughs> he eventually got there. He eventually got there, you know? If he left uh, then he left. and there, he would have left as like a cool guy, you know? <laughs> cool. Like just a cool guy in his Sky apprentice. guy, cool guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sky guy. He would have been, <laughs> yeah. And then like, um, he, that would have been it. Uh, one thing I, I forgot that, that you see in the... In, in the wrong Jedi episode mm -hmm. when Anakin has found out about Barriss off and he's fighting her. Um, they bust through the window, go outside and you see the bunch of younglings and you can see <laughs> Gungi over there. Did you see Gungi? No, I didn't see yeah. him. Yeah. He's yeah. There? He's the Wookiee over there. Oh, well, I'm assuming it's Gungi. Cause like, I didn't notice a Wookiee at all. Yeah, I was too busy yeah. focused on, I don't know the name of the Jedi, but the one that was instructing them. Oh and shoot. Would... Yes. And I was uh, like, oh, we see that guy's dead body in Kenobi. Because you're right. It does yeah, not yeah, yeah. end well for him. I forget his uh, name, too. And I, oh, man. Yeah. But he's cool because he's like got like his lightsaber like as like a part of his like walking stick, I think. And he like takes it off. It's pretty Terrace sweet. Anube, that's his name. That's right. Yeah. Terrace Anube. He just yeah, stood there and yeah. watched. He's like, um, he's like, Anakin's he's got this. <laughs> <laughs> and and also the interesting part too here is you see some dark side anakin you know mm -hmm. um you know kind of doing a little bit of force choke on barris and really oh even on uh ventress even in the uh, lower levels you know he's even going super dark you know and really tapping into the worst parts of himself Unlike, you know, as we've talked about, unlike Ahsoka would, you know. Um, Ahsoka's also, when she's kind of, quote-unquote, teamed up with Ventress, she's like, we're not killing anybody, you know. Um, even though we're teamed up, I'm, we're not killing these clones. And Ventress, like, reluctantly abides by it <laughs> and, you know, is very clever with cutting down their blasters and, you know, and, and whooping some ass, basically. <laughs> um, so, uh, again, we like it's it just, I think, again, these episodes really demonstrate that Ahsoka really is the most ideal Jedi. She really upholds those ideals in, in mm -hmm. every situation. And honestly, here's here's like this part. I forgot about this part too after, uh, you know, because I didn't watch it in a while. But Mace Windu, I think, I think he's the one that says, oh, you know what? This was your Jedi Night Trials. We see that now. <laughs> we see that now. Um, so now you're going to be a better Jedi than you ever would have been. But, uh, you know, RB, RB, you know. But, they're like, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, again, the Force, that, it works in weird ways, man. Like, this was your trial. You're good to go. Um, come on back. And she was like, I can't. Can't do it. <laughs> and it's, it's a really, it's, it's, it's a pretty gut-wrenching gut and emotional scene because, and I think they do a really good job animating the kind of the pain that's in Ahsoka's face. Um, mm -hmm. You can only do so much at this, at this stage of the game. I felt like they can only do so much, you know, in terms of expressing emotion. And I think actually, Ashley X9 does a great job, um, you know, voicing Ahsoka in these really emotional beats because, you know, she, it, it pains her to leave the Jedi order. Cause even when she's with, um, Asajj Ventress at one point she's like you know I still am a Jedi and you know she says that she's like I am mm -hmm. a Jedi and Asajj Ventress is like um it doesn't look like you are <laughs> the other people think otherwise you know and she's like oh, yeah you kind of have a point <laughs> like, they don't see me as one but I am a Jedi and I still think of Ahsoka very much as a Jedi even though um she declined to re-up with the Jedi Order mm -hmm. uh resign that contract but uh, I, I always still see her as a Jedi, and she can say all she wants. I am not a Jedi, but I'm like, she's a Jedi. She's a Jedi. She's a, <laughs> she's more a Jedi than a lot of people in the Order, if you ask me. Um, yeah, it's and, tough to – I don't know not to cut you off. I was just going to say it's tough to watch, like, Yoda and uh, Obi-Wan, like, just kind of, like, sit there and do nothing. Yeah. It's like, like – like yeah, like, you know, these are, like, our heroes. Like, they're, they're the ones that, like, survive Order 66 and keep the – 
the Jedi living on until Luke can take over. And as much as Obi Wan's like my favorite character ever, we even like you'd think that after Order sixty six they would learn from their mistakes, but they don't. <laughs> in like Return of the Jedi, like Obi Wan Kenobi is like a Force ghost. You'd think he'd be so wise, and he's like. Well, if you won't kill your father in cold blood, I guess the Emperor's already won. <laughs> right. It's just like, bro, you still don't get it. <laughs> um, one of the other things I did like about this um, was how P- they included Padme to represent Ahsoka in the yeah. uh, in the trial. Um, and I think it just goes to show you, again, this kind of like the friendship that Ahsoka and Padme have. Like, especially, I mean, just the three of them, really, Ahsoka, mm-hmm. Anakin, and Padme. Um, how how close they were, um, and how much they were there for each other, you know. Um, and so when in Tales of the Jedi, when you see Ahsoka at Padme's, you know, funeral, it's like, you know, that little mm-hmm. stuff, you know, you know, it adds up and it adds a much more emotional punch. And um, you don't you don't necessarily get that, you know, if if you don't if you haven't watched Clone Wars or whatnot and seen like or read other stories. But I mean, it's still emotional. But I don't think you get the full scope, the full feel of what it's like for Ahsoka. Um, and and like this is really one of like the first stages of her being on her own. You know, being hunted down and being on her own. Because obviously, after Order sixty six, that gets taken to a whole nother level, right? And she's on the run and um, and alone. And it's and it's and it's devastating because you know she all these clones despite their allegiance or, uh, you know, unwavering allegiance to the Republic, you know, they're, they're hunting her down at the end of the Clone Wars, you know, series. And, and she's still not um, willing to, to kill them, which, um, you know, again, it's just kind of the main thing that I love about Ahsoka is that she is unwavering um, in situations where, it, you'd be like, oh yeah, she had to defend herself, and you know, and these clones died, you know, in the process. You know, they what what, what do you think was going to happen? But she, but somehow, you know, she's always like, you always have a choice. Is basically what it comes down to. You know, sometimes you'll say, didn't have a choice. They had to. You know, Palpatine says that to Anakin uh, in Revenge of the Sith. He left you with no. You know, he killed. Um, um, you took your arm, you, you know, you killed him. <laughs> you know, you had no you choice. You wanted revenge. Right. You, wanted, you had no choice. I mean, was you told me about your mother and the Zen people. You know, and so, but Ahsoka is always like, you know, we always have a choice. We always have a choice to to be better um, and, and not and not take take the easy path, you know. Um, and, and she, and that's what I really do love about Ahsoka, and I think these past... These four episodes that we've covered so far, I think, really exemplify that. Um, and uh, I, I'm looking forward to the other episodes that we're going to be covering, Brandon, because the next two that we're going to um, cover, oh boy, these are some of my favorite ones, Brandon. Have you seen mm-hmm. the the season, the series finale of Clone Wars? Yes, I have. I've seen. Yeah, no, I have. I had to think about it for a second. Okay, but yeah. Well, it's, pretty it's pretty good. season seven episodes, but we're doing episodes. Let me see here. Episodes nine and 12. So we're not oh. doing them um, particularly in. Or did, did I did I mistype this? I, I don't know. know. It's very I, guess, I guess. Well, I put it nine and 12. Old friends not forgotten and victory and death. The, the start of the arc and the end of the arc. So, um of the of the of the siege of Mandalore, basically, but um, Ahsoka is obviously a huge part of that, and I'm looking forward to talking about these episodes because basically we're just talking about the whole arc, the siege of Mandalore arc. It's one big thing, and uh, it's great, and it's some of my favorite Star Wars of all time. Uh, this arc, um, and it's the series finale of Clone Wars, which is a great show. Um, not to <laughs> really promote, <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, that's, that's going to be next week. So, um, before we wrap up, we did have a question, um, in our discord and it's not, it's going to kind of going back to a little bit of what's going on with the strike ish sort of, but, uh, Thomas H H he says, or asks, I heard that Disney is cutting Star Wars content, among others, 
for the future. What is your take on this? Is less more, Brandon? Is less mm-hmm. more? What was your take on scaling back on Star Wars content? Yeah, I think like I've always felt like something like Star Wars that is like cherished by so many people. You should be like delicate like with it. So I think like less is more. Like it makes you like appreciate it like you know absence makes the heart grow fonder sort of thing um you know uh it's it's been great to get like all these like television shows and i think like for the most part i've really enjoyed them but um it does kind of i think like as like when you're like a completist who likes to rewatch everything, it makes it a very daunting yes. task. So uh, I wouldn't mind like a little bit of a break um, leading up to the whatever films are going to come out. Um, who knows but, now, man? Yeah, <laughs> for real. So yeah, but that's my I guess like overall like thoughts. Yeah, um, I I do think I agree in a sense that less is more. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to you know if. But also at the same time, you know, if the quality, if you're able to deliver the quality uh, on a on a on a kind of a, a rapid schedule, if you will, mm-hmm. with you know when we had um, Mandalorian, then you had Obi Wan and Boba Fett and Andor, right? You know, like pumping out these shows. Um, I didn't particularly think Obi Wan was executed as well as it could have been. Um, same thing with Boba Fett, although I think it was probably the vision of it was probably executed a little bit more to what they wanted to do. It's just a matter of taste and preference if if you, if you jive with that. Um, Mandalorian and Andor continue to be standout series amongst the series that have been released. Obviously, animation is uh, you can't even don't even try to begrudge Star Wars animation. Mm. It's just just. Just don't do it, son. To, to copy uh, Captain Rogers, if you will, uh, don't try it. Whatever. You, what was, what's the line, Brandy? You remember? I think what's doesn't it? he say like, "Son, don't, don't, yeah, Something like that." Son, just <laughs> or, don't. He says, yeah. "Don't or just don't." I, I think don't he remember. says, "Son, just don't." I think that's what he said. I think that's what he said. <laughs> so that's what I said to Star Wars animation because it just cannot be touched. Bad Batch, Clone Wars, Rebels, uh, Tales of the Jedi, um, Resistance. Yeah, I said it. I said it. Resistance. I mean, anyways, but. Um, yeah, I do think less is more, and I'm kind of with you too. I would like a little bit more time to stew with like a, a show or a movie that comes out and and really sit with it a little bit longer. Um, mostly, mostly the shows. I think the way the movies were released the, with the sequel trilogy, I was. Mm-hmm. I think that's that was enough time in between movies. But I think when you have mm-hmm. like three Star Wars shows in a year or whatever it is, I, I think man, like you know, it goes back to. Um, these execs, you know, trying to reel in subscribers by pumping in, pumping out all these shows and then not fairly paying the writers or and, or, or who have mm-hmm. you. Um, I mean, yeah, you look at something like Willow that came and went. You can't you can't watch Willow the, can't. the show that's, that's, anymore. It's a that's brand just new show. Appalling to there, me. It's imp- it's impossible to watch it. You can't rent it. It doesn't exist in physical media, and it's not on Disney Plus because what they don't want to pay the actors residuals or the writers or well I mean, which is kind wow. of weird because apparently they don't really pay that much in residual anyway <laughs> so it's like <laughs> you weren't paying that them that much to begin with and yeah like you know what it's like how much money does it cost you to just leave something up on a server i've had videos on youtube for years <laughs> yeah <laughs> like you know like i uploaded them once they didn't go anywhere they're just yeah. there taking up space yeah. youtube doesn't send me a bill they just leave it up yeah what, the, it, it, what yeah. the hell's going on? So yeah, uh, um, people work hard on that. You know, to bring so. to bring it back to though to is less more. Yeah, I do think so. But and I think I, I wonder if I'm having that stance because I feel like the quality isn't. I mean, look, I, I think two out of four, three out of four, did the quality was there. And it just all comes mm-hmm. down to like what stories you like being told and how you like them being told. I think um, there's no denying Andor is it is exquisite piece of television, if I dare say cinema. You know as mm-hmm. well, Mandalorian I think is great for what it does. You know they're two different kinds of shows that do their jobs extremely well. I wasn't particularly blown away by Boba Fett, although I appreciate it. Um, same thing with Obi-Wan. I wish I liked it more. I want to like it more, but there are just some things 
on how it was produced that I just go, man, I wish they they took more time. And um, it's part, you know, I think it, I think in the end it was victim of the machine um, trying to pump out these shows. It was a pandemic type of thing. So I'm trying to really look at all this objectively in terms of like, well, what if it was if it was produced as well as it could have been? Um, yeah, and, and it was. And, yeah. And it was written as a movie and then right. like stretched out into a show. And, you know, I, I don't necessarily mind the quantity, but like if something needs more time, give it more time. Like Definitely. I felt that the Rise of Skywalker suffered from that, where it was pretty last minute them letting go Colin Trevorrow, bringing on J.J. Abrams and asking him to write a brand new movie that's going to yeah. be out in like less than two years. <laughs> it's like... Because, because you know what, Brandon, that movie's got to be out to make them quarterly reports, yeah. so we can, so those guys can get their bonuses. I mean, like sometimes that's that's like what happens when things get rushed. It's not because I mean, is that the way they do with Justice League? Oh God! Yeah, it's like it, it's it's not that you know, J.J. J. Abrams sucks, like <laughs> is is a is a pretty great director, right? And I think so. But like when you mm-hmm. give these people time to do what they do best. Instead of putting them on a rush schedule because it's got to be out by this time, or else you know, because um, mm-hmm. we got to make the most. This is how we can make the most amount of money out of it. Who cares what the quality is? Because the higher ups are only looking at it as as a as a line item. They're not looking at it as a creative art form and how to take care of it. They're just looking how can we if we do this we can get this much money out of it. And that's all I care about because I got to make the shareholders um, happy. And so. Um, so I guess basically, if they're gonna cut back Star Wars content, then okay, good. But I hope you give the other content enough time. See, that's the other thing, then, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you may be pulling back, but are, are these other projects on on the same amount having the same um, length of timeline to work with, or do you give them more time to work on stuff because, or you know, or you don't because of X, Y, and Z factor, right? So if you're going to pull back on content, then the ones that you do pump out, they better – there's no excuse because there's so many talented people at Lucasfilm and Disney and all that um, that make quality, quality stories and TV shows and movies and whatnot. Um, and so to, like, hinder their ability if you speed up their process, I think is – you want to talk about bad business. I think that's bad business. <laughs> like mm-hmm. hampering your talent. All so that you can make a few extra million dollars at the box office or where have you. You know, let if you're gonna do less is more, then let the projects that you have in the pipeline that are developing, let them develop. Let them, you know, go through a process where they can figure out how to best tell the story and, and how to best produce it and get the best people involved. Um, otherwise, what's the point? Then just you, you know. So, yeah, all this goes. All of this is just a cyclical cycle of, of you know. Is, is this company gonna is in it for the money? Are they in it trying to make art? Are they trying to make quality stories? And and, so, and all credit to the creators that are always constantly under the gun that are able to deliver because that I think takes a certain type of person to be able to mm-hmm. be at the top of your game and be under pressure from a studio to deliver it by you know X date, right? Um, but uh, you know, what do I know? What <laughs> what do I know? <laughs> I only make three hundred times less than the than the top guy so whatever you know <laughs> i think it's like 400 times 400 times yeah i think it's four, you're right 400 yeah times. all right more so, than one way to lose a house <laughs> 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 man there's some crazy stuff going on out there and it's who want to give ron perlman a hug dude do i ever oh my gosh and a handshake <laughs> <laughs> you know um all right, so next week we're going to be covering in our part three of our Ahsoka Essentials, uh, the last arc of the Clone Wars. We're, but we're mainly going to be talking about episode nine, Old Friends, Not Forgotten, and episode 12, Victory and Death. That's the seventh and final season. So basically we'll be talking about the whole arc, but those two um, episodes specifically. And then um, if you're not aware, we're doing a giveaway Leading up, to, leading up to the premiere of the Ahsoka show um, on August 23rd. And here's how you enter. Let me see if I can remember these rules, Brandon. Every comment on our video is an entry. Every reply to a comment is two points. 
And if you send an email, which you can find right here on the screen, it's uh, scoundrels 4inc at gmail.com. I would think that's right, but for sure it's right <laughs> on the screen and in the description. Um, if you send us an email about how you found Star Wars, that's five entries. We've had some people send emails, and uh, um, I forgot to forward them to you, Brandon, but I, I will yeah. <laughs> make sure <laughs> um, to send it to you. And, um, you know, thanks for everyone who commented and chimed in and, and whatnot. Um, thanks for participating. And uh, someone, I, I think it's fair to say, has a big lead. <laughs> <laughs> you probably know who you are, and that's cool. I appreciate it. Love it, uh, but someone should try and catch up to him. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying, Brandon. Someone should try and you know take his lead. Yeah. Should we? Should we like? Oh, I didn't even say what, what? we were giving away. I, mean, yeah, I said no. it last week. I said it yeah. last week. But uh, the the giveaway is for a Ahsoka Black Series uh, figure, whether it's the Rebels version or the Mandalorian version, up to you. But uh, if Brandon had his way, he would send you a Terrace Anube in a chamber. You know, one of those man. Yeah. And a, Again, some yellow jello. And some yellow jello. <laughs> <laughs> or is it orange? Or I don't know. But it's like um, amber, I think. Amber? Yeah. Or whatever. Just like Jurassic Park. Just you like clone him, Jurassic guy. Park. <laughs> Could you imagine like well, like John Hammond's staff and said the mosquito <laughs> in the amber is just Terrace Sanube? Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> Amazing. Somebody make that meme. Think if Moff that... Gideon had like yeah. one of those just like <laughs> walking around. Somebody make that image five more points. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, I was actually going to say if we if we should make things a little more interesting and offer more points if um if maybe like send us an email with like a screenshot of you like retweeting support for like the SAG WGA strike maybe I don't know Frank I'm, this is kind of I'm kind of ad libbing this on the spot. We'll make it another five points if if you show uh, um, support and solidarity solidarity on whatever social media platform you use. Yeah. Um, and email us a screenshot. Preferably of it. threads, but you know. <laughs> it's right. Threads, <laughs> baby. Don't tell Kevin. Don't tell Kevin. Yeah, he'll never see it. He'll never see it. We gotta, see we're going to have to bully him into going on threads. <laughs> I think he, is he on threads? Or he, I think he just joked about it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't get that notification, but um, we'll, we'll have to ask him uh, next week. Yeah. Scoundrel. Scoundrel. I like the sound of that. <laughs>